Welcome to this primer on relations. This is our first lecture and what we need to understand today's lecture is uh, the notion of sets and functions. Especially we need the notion of Cartesian products. All of this is already available on the channel. Just find the link to the current playlist in the description below and you'll be able to find the primers on both these topics. Okay. So let's directly define what is a relation. Uh, typically one should motivate a definition perhaps with some nice example which sets the stage for the formal definition but uh, as of now uh, or maybe for this particular concept let us uh, not do that. Let us directly see what is a relation. So suppose x and y are sets and they are non-empty. I do not want to say this every time. Then a relation from x to y is a subset so a relation from x to y is a subset of x cross y and this may feel like a very very abstract or meaningless definition but what you can do is let's say Think of X as all the uh, men in a city, in your city, and Y be the set of all the women in your city. And you want to record the sibling relation. You want to record which man is the brother of which woman. So then you can see that it will be a subset of X cross Y. Any element M comma W, little m comma W in X cross Y would then mean that M and W are brothers and sisters. Okay, so this relation can translate into colloquial usage. Although mathematically this is a very very important concept. I do not want to make light of it. Let's see an example. So here we have the set X consisting of three things 1, 4 and 9. The set Y is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And the relation that we want to uh, put from x to y records which elements of x are greater than which elements of y. So the ordered pairs x comma y with x coming from capital X and y coming from capital Y such that x exceeds y. Okay, so that's that's a relation and one can make a picture to depict the same. Here this side is the set x this side is the set Y and these arrows they capture exactly which elements in X are greater than which elements in Y. So 1 is not greater than anything here so this, this can be left hungry. 4 is greater than 2 but nothing else so 1 arrow going from 4 to 2 and 9 is greater than 8, 6, 4 and 2 so it has arrows going out into all of those. So just like we can draw such graphs for or such diagrams for functions, we can draw such diagrams also for relations. The key difference is that when we draw such things for functions, then nothing on the left side can be hungry and everything on the left side has only one arrow going out of it. But here in relations, the things are much, much more relaxed. So we can immediately see that relations are generalizations of functions. We will discuss this point in some detail in the next slides. So let's move on. So let's see one more example. Suppose x is all the non-zero integers and y is all the integers. Then we define r a subset of x cross y as So this captures the divisibility relation. We want to know which things here divide which things there, which is why we have left out zero from x because we do not want to talk about zero divides, whatever. That is not a meaningful notion. So this is your divisibility relation. And one point of uh, notation let me, let me introduce in the previous slide. So if uh, R is a relation from X to Y.
and we have an element in R, so an ordered pair, then we may also write x, r, y. Okay, so writing this and writing that are the same things. Just a point of notation. So this is your divisibility relation, nothing, nothing to say about it. And here is another relation that we will define. So this time x and y are both the same sets as natural numbers. So one may define the following relation. So this records which elements of x are relatively prime with which elements of y. So relatively prime means that if you have a prime divisor of x, then it cannot be a divisor of y. So there is no prime divisors common between x and y and hence there are no divisors except the number 1 common between x and y. Okay, so you may record this uh, data and this one may give it a name but I don't think there is a name to it. So this is also an example of a relation. Let us see one more example. Functions. So functions are special cases of relations and let us formally uh, you know, justify that. So this is an example of a function just for reference. But uh, here is how we define a relation given a function. So suppose we are given a function from a set x to a set y, then we may define rf subset of x cross y as as that. So basically you're recording which points of x map to which points of y. Alternately we could have also written This was an equivalent description. So if you are given a function, you can obviously create a relation. But in the other direction, suppose we have a relation. So okay, so I'll write a statement and I hope it will be clear to you what or why that statement is true. So a function from x to y. can be thought of as a relation from x to y such that so relation R from x to y such that two things uh, or maybe just one thing let's see such that for all x in x, there exists unique y in y such that x comma y is in the relation. Yeah, so that's it. This is basically a function. Right, so such a relation naturally gives rise to a function. So just like in a function for each element x in the domain of the function, there is a unique element in the target which is mapped to by f. So here, yeah, maybe this notation I should mention, this means there exists unique. This means there exists unique. Okay. So yeah, so a function can be thought of as a relation of this particular sort. All right. Finally, uh, we can compose two relations just like we can compose two functions. We can compose two relations and give rise to a new relation. So suppose x, y and z are non-empty sets. R is a relation from x to y. So what that means is R is a subset of x cross y and s is a subset or meaning sorry 
S is a relation from Y to Z. So S is a subset of Y cross Z. Then we define the composite of S and R. And that's the notation for the composite. So the composite of S and R written this way is defined as a relation from X to Z in the following way. So uh, for X in X and Y in Y, oh, sorry, Z in Z, we have X comma Z in the composite if and only if there exists y in y such that x is related to y via r and y is related to z via s okay in other words s composed with r is nothing but So this is another way to write the same thing. So this is how you define composites. And uh, basically, there, if there is a mediator between the two elements, x and z, you put that in the compositum. And you can see if you have you know, a function and you create a relation rf out of it, and you have a function g, you create a relation rg out of it. And if the target of f is the domain of g, then forming the composite of these two functions as we did in our discussion on functions is same as forming the composite of these two relations and then interpreting that as a function because this will satisfy the clause that we wrote here this clause so it's not like uh, this definition does not respect our previous definition of composites when we were discussing functions it does respect that definition Okay, so that should be the end of this lecture. Uh, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.